Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Hoffman, a software engineer, security researcher, and technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. Today, I'm going to explain to you the mechanics behind DOM-based cross-site scripting attacks, to the point at which you should be able to go out and make use of DOM-based cross-site scripting attacks to win bug bounties and test your own applications. So once again, we find ourselves on Google's cross-site scripting game a game that was created by Google in order to evaluate the cross-site scripting skills of bug bounty hunters, security engineers, and other types of security professionals. This time we're on level three, that sinking feeling. The reason we're on level three is because this application includes a DOM-based cross-site scripting vulnerability. But before we can talk about that, we need to briefly cover what is cross-site scripting. So cross-site scripting is a form of attack where a hacker is able to convince a browser to execute code that the hacker created on behalf of another user. So in previous examples, we looked at reflected cross-site scripting, where a payload could be present in, for example, a URL query parameter, which would hit the server, and the server would use that URL query parameter to generate a new page, send it back to the client, script execution would occur, because that payload would be interpreted as script or something leading to script. In the stored example, what would happen is a user would submit something on a chat app or any other type of application that has persistence. Persistence is key when we're talking about stored cross-site scripting. And that payload would be persistent in a database. And whenever another user called that page, whenever they did an HTTP GET, requested that page and loaded it into their browser, they would load in a page that includes the payload that was stored in the database. Now in DOM cross-site scripting, neither of those two things occur. A server does not reflect, it does not send back a new web page, it does not send back new HTML, nor does it store any payloads. So what's DOM XSS? So this paper here, DOM-based cross-site scripting, or cross-site scripting, XSS, of a third kind, a look at an overlooked flavor of XSS, was written by Amit Klein on July 2005. And this is the earliest reference to DOM-based cross-site scripting that I could find on the web. And in this paper, Amit Klein, a security researcher, suggests that most people are familiar with the two main types of cross-site scripting, persistent and non-persistent, aka reflected and stored. However, he suggests that there are cases where the cross-site scripting attack is neither reflected nor stored. So how can that be? Well, in this application, we have three tabs, tab one, tab two, tab three. We click on these tabs, the URL bar changes, in particular, the window.location.hash changes to a new value. But is it generating a new web page from the server? Let's check by looking at the network tab. As you can see here, when we change the tabs, the only thing that changes is the image that is inside of the tab is loaded. No new HTML is loaded. So if cross-site scripting were to occur in this page, it would all have to be from within this single page application. It doesn't hit the server. So let's dig a little bit deeper into this application and see what makes it tick. So this is the source of the vulnerable application, the iframe. Inside of this, inside of the head, you'll notice there's a script tag here. And this script tag has a function called choose tab. It takes a number. Now as we click here, it's very obvious that we're actually making use of this choose tab function. And it's defaulting to one when it loads, and you can read through the rest of the code if you'd like to. But the important part is all this is occurring in the browser. No server is ever being hit with any HTTP request, WebSocket, or any other form of network request for data. So inside of this choose tab function, you'll notice that there's this line var HTML equals image plus parse int num plus br. Hmm, what could that be? So let's change this a bit. We change to three test. And then we notice that based on the value three test, we are generating a new location for the image. 
In this case, it's an invalid location, so it wasn't able to load in. So let's imagine that we want to escape, escape out of this function up here. So what we could do is something akin to this. So we escape out of the string. And since we already know that we're going to end up in an image tag, we then render an on error pointing to an alert. And now in the previous video, we talked about how on error is an attribute that fits inside of the image tag that is capable of executing script. In fact, if the SRC turns out to be invalid, it will immediately invoke the on error attribute if it's present and execute any arbitrary JavaScript that comes after the on error attributes definition. So let's click go. Let's see what happens. As you can see, we had a pop up. We got script execution, and we advance to the next level, or we have the capacity to. So why did this happen? Well, in this particular case, this value right here is referenced in the browser as window.location.hash. You'll notice in the console, if I type window.location.hash, you won't actually see anything. Or actually, it looks like you will, because I'm already within the iframe. I was assuming that the context of the console was up here. But typically, you run window.location.hash and you get the value of the hash. Now, window.location.hash is a browser DOM function, so you could say that this is the source. This is where the script is coming from. And if we go back to the script over here, we can see that the DOM is loading in this element, the script tag which has the choose num function, which is the function that we escaped out of in order to embed the image with the on error handler down here. So this is the sync. Both the source and the sync for this cross-site scripting attack are in the DOM. No server is ever requested. Because both the source and the sync occur entirely within the DOM, within this single application inside of the single page. This particular attack is categorized as a DOM-based cross-site scripting attack.